Before we finish, there's one more variable to discuss. Demand for generation is always changing, and it affects the size of the Orphals blocks. You never really have two blocks of exactly 16%. The blocks are always changing in size due to the dynamic nature of provision. Here are our existing scheme on the left and the winning scheme on the right. We've changed these to theoretical, and that's because of the dynamic nature of provision. Here's our seesaw again, showing the existing scheme. In an ideal world, we have two blocks of 16%. But how do the providers actually provide these blocks? Different distribution companies will have a different mix of customers, as shown on this graph. There's residential, commercial, industrial, and others. Total demand changes depending on the time of day. Typically, residential customers use more in the morning and in the evening. Commercial and industrial users might have different profiles. The Orphals blocks are selected at the point in time where total demand is at its lowest to meet the minimum requirement of the Electricity Industry Participation Code. The code specifies that Orphals blocks must comprise two blocks of at least 16% of load at all times. The code is only concerned with that minimum level. There is no upper limit. So most Orphals providers look at their load profile and make sure they have 16% at their lowest demand period, say 3am. As the day progresses and people are at home cooking dinner and heating their homes, the total demand increases too. The blocks now represent a much bigger proportion of total demand. This is because the same people are armed for Orphals, but their use has increased. Although this is just an example, you can see that at certain times of the day, Orphals can represent around 50% of the total demand in that area, rather than the expected 32%. At the bottom of the screen, notice how the clock is changing to reflect how the load is changing throughout the day. The peak increases, in this case, to 24%. Look at how this changes the shape of the sawtooth. The top line shows 24% and the bottom line is 16%. The dotted line is the average, and the shaded area in between shows anything above 16%, but less than 24%. What you can see in practice with the existing scheme is that the size of block 2 really hurts performance in terms of overfrequency. Even the winning scheme has the risk of going above 52 hertz, which is highlighted in red, but the size of the effect is less than the existing scheme. So how can we manage surplus provision? A lot of this depends on provision behaviour and how much surplus provision we get on the system. Provision is really based around being compliant with the code and how the requirement is expressed affects how Orphals is provided. This is an area that the Electricity Authority is looking at closely. But we can talk theoretically about some of the ways we can manage the issue. One approach is to impose a maximum. In this case, let's say 39% is the top limit. You can see on the sawtooth that it shrinks the range of provision and performance improves. If this is required in real time, we have been advised that technically it is currently quite challenging for providers. It requires real-time monitoring and control of Orphals relays, which is not commonly available. Another way you can manage provision is to accept the fact that load is variable, and change the minimum level so that on average you achieve a better result. We have shown this on the sawtooth. You can see by changing the minimum from 32% to 26%, the average sits where our minimum used to. The maximum is slightly lower. Changing the minimum level does have a trade-off. You can see the minimum frequency is now also lower. The maximum disturbance that you can cover at those times is smaller, but this method reduces the risk of over-frequency. It's really a trade-off about what failure is more likely, under-frequency or over-frequency. Going forward, the four-block scheme of 10 10 6, 6 with DFDT is what we propose as the next awful scheme design for the North Island. The dynamic nature of provision affects how Orphals is actually set up and made available in our system. Any changes will be reflected in the obligations outlined in the code.